One of the hardest tasks that we find as tasters here with this category of champagne at over $100 is working out a top 10, a list of the top wines, and how do we put one in a position above another? It's really very difficult. It's a bit like comparing great architecture. Uh, is the Sydney Opera House a better thing than the Eiffel Tower? Uh, are the Houses of Parliament at Westminster more impressive than the Colosseum in Rome? Very difficult to separate them and very difficult to separate top champagnes like these. There were 17 wines in this category and of those, no less than 13 scored our top rating of five stars. And that's really rare. It's not, there's, there's, I can't think of any other category of wine that we taste at Cuisine where you get such a high strike rate of five star wines that sit really right at the top. Uh, so great champagne is in good shape. The top wine of the tasting was from Tatanger, one of the most famous champagne houses just outside uh, on the fringes of the city of Reims, which is really, I suppose, the champagne capital. Uh, it's their Folie de la Marqueterie, which is uh, a, a special wine uh, named after their chateau uh, in that uh, town of Reims. Um, it was a wonderful wine and it, had, it combined richness with delicacy as only these wines can. And it had a wonderful presence and length of flavour. It was there with us for a long time. We loved it. Tattinger's sister wine to that, which is actually a lot more expensive, was also one of our top wines. That's Tattinger Comte de Champagne, which is flagship, I suppose you could say, and unusual in that it was one of the first 100% Chardonnay uh, prestige cuvee wines. Uh, speaking of prestige cuvee wines, the first of them was Moet de Chandon's Dom Perignon, and that featured very well in this tasting too, the Tapas 2005. So I think the message above all that comes out of this tasting is that any of these wines are wonderful and it's very hard to separate one from the other. So uh, when you look at Cuisine's list of top 10 champagnes over $100, be assured that any of those wines is going to offer you an experience of champagne, which is the best champagne experience you can have. Wines like these great French champagnes are certainly wines for celebration. Uh, there's nothing that enhances a special occasion like a bottle of Dom Perignon or something like that. Um, so that celebratory uh, idea is part of their makeup. But so too is the fact that they're very good to drink at the table. They're great with different kinds of food. And in France, they drink them with everything. You know, uh, if you're lucky enough to go to Champagne and have a, a Champenoise dinner in the style that they seem to love, you get it from the, the appetizer to the dessert and all points in between. And they tend to sometimes serve fuller, richer wines with fuller, richer dishes, more delicate wines, perhaps Blanc de Blanc, from Chardonnay wines at the more delicate food. So the moral of the story, I think, in our tasting of over $100 champagnes uh, is the fact that they might be a bit pricey, but they really deliver. Uh, you can spend a lot for other types of wine and not get exactly what you want, but with champagne, they're very reliable.